Meanwhile, presidential hopeful for the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Ayim Pius Ayim, is promising an all-inclusive government that will recognize people with disabilities if he is elected Nigeria's president. Well, Ayim made this promise when he hosted representatives of persons with disability in continuation of his consultations ahead of the party's primaries. Well, he appealed to the, the, he appealed to the group for support of his ambition. I believe that until the least of us, the most diverse of us, is recognized, respected, and engaged, the rest of us will never be fulfilled. And that is why I chose this evening to break this fast with all of us and to have beautiful prayer meetings like we have had in fact, it was under our regime when we were in the National Assembly that we made it compulsory that every public building must have a ram. And a whole series of that, particularly when we, I was SGF, we made sure in everything we were doing, including the National Conference, that people with special needs are represented. That inclusiveness is what I want to bring to bear on the leadership of this country. And that is why I have come today for your prayers. I have come today for your support. I have come today for your partnership. And to discuss further on this, we're now being joined by Sam Mwabasi. He is the Director of Communication for the IM Presidential Campaign. Sam, thank you so much for being here tonight on the program. Thank you. And of course, let's start with the fact that we have seen the plan by some northern aspirants of the PDP to come up with a consensus candidate. Apparently, that's falling apart. But I do know that the southeastern uh, aspirants, some of them at least, have actually been working together to see how they can get some consensus candidate to actually represent this, on which some analysts believe that that is the best chance for the region to produce not just the next flag bearer of the party, but maybe the next president. Chances that, you know, the southeastern consensus plans will go through? Well, l l let me start from the northern aspirants mm -hmm. and the consensus arrangement they started and which appears to be collapsing now. Uh, and to say that at first, most people, uh, many people saw that as strange politics. Four people or so contesting for the same position, going around together to campaign. And people didn't understand what that meant, uh, but it was a welcome development, if you ask me, mm -hmm. that people who had the same aspiration could come together and then talk to uh, people to, at the same time that eliminated the rancor, the, the, the infighting, and sometimes violence that attends to political campaign. I think that it was a welcome ad, uh, uh, development. But if it has collapsed and they want to go about it separately, that, well, that's, well, that's well, it. I need you to focus on the southeast. Okay, right now. no, I, 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 was, I was coming to that. Yes. Now, the southeast contestants they met, I remember some two, th two weeks ago in, in Abuja here. Mm -hmm. The focus of their meeting is not necessarily to produce a consensus candidate. They were very clear in the statement they read. Uh, uh, Senator Anion was the one who read the statement on behalf of them. They said they wanted to come together to work together to ensure that a Southeasterner is produced as the presidential candidate of the PDP. That is seen as a consensus, isn't it? No, if it, it, it is consensus, it's working together to ensure that Southeast that has been okay. asking to be given the chance to produce the president of Nigeria very legitimately mm. gets that, that, that opportunity. And that let it not be that the contestation among them right. will be in their way. So each person is okay. free to go about his campaign, but they have not. And, and, and trust me, they have never discussed the issue of consensus candidate and they have not agreed on All any. Right. Uh, well, let's talk about another issue that is a sticking issue with the PDP, which you are a member of. It's the issue of zoning, even though we're still expecting <coughs> the neck of the party to come up with that, you know, all-important document as submitted by the zoning committee. Well, the information is out there that they had decided to throw it open to all geopolitical zones, even though some people believe that it should have been zoned to a particular region. So looking at the fact that now as it stands, the PDP has got... 17 presidential aspirants. What are the chances that your principal will emerge as the flag bearer of the party? Well, 
the, my, my principal is, is running for the office of president because he believes, he is convinced that he has got what it takes now to serve Nigeria in that capacity. You know, Nigeria is at such a period where you need not just somebody who has gone to school, not somebody who, who has helped government office, but somebody that has taken time to understand the nature of the challenges that are facing Nigerians. Somebody has, that has been on the front seat of how working with government, watching government policies bid, knowing what makes policies to fail or to succeed, having experience in that various areas of government at very high level, a Senate president, secretary to the government of the Federation. He has gathered enough experience that, in fact, it is offering to Nigerians to pay back a little what this country has given to him because whatever he is today, he was made by Nigeria. And if he has this kind of experience, the competence, the capacity, and he wants to serve Nigeria at this time that somebody with that kind of knowledge and experience is needed. I, I, I think Nigerians know what they want. Well, Sam, you're talking to me about what he plans to do for Nigerians. But the question to you was, chances that he will emerge as the flag bearer of the PDF, first of all, before going to the national stage to seek the votes of Nigerians. So chances, looking at especially seven uh, aspirants from the Southeast Geopolitical Zone, and of course, putting that together with 10 others from the North as well as other regions as well. No, that was your question. No, the, his chances, his chances are yeah. as bright as can be. There is nobody that will step into the ring that can intimidate him. Even if there are 50 of them, Nigerians know what they want. PDP delegates, those that are going to come to that convention, they know what Nigerians want. They know who can win election. They know the experiences that are required to win that election. Anyem stands out from what he has done. I am stands out from, from things he has done in this, this country that people can know and remember. So his chances are as bright as, as, as you can imagine. And he's going into this, this context with the fullest of confidence, knowing that the people that are coming there are Nigerians. He has been talking to them across the states, and I know the kind of responses he has been getting. We are very, very confident and sure. Right. And of course, uh, I have heard him speak a couple of times. He's speaking about continuing from where former president, good luck, Abel and Jonathan actually stopped in terms of development of Nigeria. Some mm. don't believe that's a good idea because if good luck, Jonathan was as fantastic, he probably wouldn't have lost the elections in 2050. Do you think it's a good idea, his campaigning on continuing from where the PDP stopped in 2015? If we want to be honest with ourselves, Nigerians are seriously yearning for it an hour before the 29th of May 2015. I, I, I don't need to tell you, you are here. How much is the dollar exchanging to, to the Naira today? How much were you buying fuel at night by 2015? By 2015, you could go from here to Kaduna and joyfully, and joyfully so. Can you drive now and go to Kaduna? Several things have gone wrong. And Nigerians are waiting with a lot of nostalgia that can we go back to where we were in 2015 and start from there there are challenges that have arisen he's not a mindful of such challenges they were saying let's go back to where we were when people had confidence in this country foreign investors were coming because they saw a country that had promise nigerians were moving around doing businesses now in in the south is where i come from you don't work on mondays now if you can't go to any part of the north and feel safe can we have a country where nigerians will be confident and look at least we can go to bed and wake up and then do what we want to do now i, I don't want to talk about the programs of uh, 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 president good Lord jonathan what he achieved you know that nigeria was rated the fastest growing economy in africa by 2015 when the economy was rebased a number of things happened but now this is where we are but unfortunately, it has happened to us. We now need somebody who can settle down, who knew what happened, who can go back and reconnect with where we stopped and continue. Let us say we have an, an eight years of, uh, I don't want to say wasted eight years, but some eight years of pain and trauma. Can we forget it 
with what will happen from 2023 when we get the right leadership to drive us on the path we are supposed to be. We should be far, far away from where we are today. But unfortunately, this is where we are. But as human beings, we face it. I believe that the right leader is I am Pius. I am Sam Obosi, the director of communication of uh, that's for the I am presidential campaign. Thank you so much for joining us tonight Thank on you. the program. And good luck to you and your principal Thank at you. the primaries, of course, coming up the 228th and the 29th of May.